Hello, High Level listeners. We are back. Welcome to Episode 8 of Season 2 of our Advanced English Podcast Series. Today, we'll be giving lots of advanced vocabulary and phrases all about taking an Uber or using a ride-sharing app to get your next ride. After watching this episode, you'll be able to answer questions in English like, is Uber available where you live? Do you guys have ride-sharing? How do you use the app? Do you have to wait a while to get a ride? Yes, that's right. Welcome back, everyone. We are High Level Listening, and we give you side-by-side -side British and American English from two experienced English teachers. My name's Mark, the British voice here on the channel, and I'm here with Kat, the American voice of High Level Listening. Yes, absolutely. As usual, we'll be sharing our American and British perspectives on today's topic. I'll start with an American script with phrases you're more likely to hear in the United States, and Mark will share his British script with a more British twist from the UK. Then we'll break down the scripts line by line, explaining things in more detail and giving you examples and a deeper understanding of the best language. So you can talk more confidently about taking an Uber in English. Yes, before we begin, just a quick reminder, we recommend joining us here on YouTube as a high-level listening member, because then you can download PDF transcripts of this episode and our whole catalogue. The PDF transcript gives you every sentence, every word, every example from the episode, and you can get that all yours to take offline and study at your own pace. So if you click the join button below or look in the description below, you'll see how to become a member down there. So let's jump in to the scripts. I will ask Kat the main question first. Do you have rideshare where you live? Actually, it's really easy to get an Uber pretty much any time of day in almost any big U.S. city. I usually switch between two or three different services. I open up each app, type in the address, and see which one is the cheapest. As long as they don't cancel on me, I don't usually have to wait too long. Even at four in the morning, you can find somebody. When my ride shows up, I always do a quick check of the license plate. They confirm my name, Cat. Yes. And then I get into the back seat and off we go. Sometimes I get a chatty driver, so we chat a bit, a little small talk, but sometimes I don't feel like talking, so I just sit and look out the window or down at my phone. In the U.S., it's customary to tip your driver, maybe a few dollars or 10%, depending on the ride. I usually just leave the tip and a review on the app, so it's all really convenient. All right, so Mark, what about you? Do you have rideshare where you live? The taxi apps here are actually really solid, and you can basically grab one virtually anywhere, anytime. I usually flip between two or three big apps here and Honestly, they are absolute lifesavers because the licensed taxis here are expensive and there are also some horror stories of cab drivers ripping people off, but the drivers on the apps are much more reliable and trustworthy. They're dead easy to use as well. You open up the app, tap in your address, and then it starts trying to connect you with someone. I hardly ever wait more than five minutes. There's usually a driver just around the corner, usually dropping someone else off. When they pull up, I make sure to double check the number plate before I hop in the back seat. And then I track my journey on the app to make sure we're going the right way. More often than not, I just sit quietly, mess about on my phone until we arrive. I usually give the driver five stars unless they go completely the wrong way or drove like an absolute maniac. OK, so those are our two scripts side by side. We both said similar things just in our own way. So you get double the vocabulary. Now we'll go through each script. We'll go back to the beginning and look at the most important phrases and vocabulary from each line. So, Kat, is Uber available where you live or do you guys have Uber? Absolutely. It's really easy to get an Uber pretty much any time of day in almost any big U.S. city. So we are using these phrases, get an Uber, get a ride or get a taxi. Now, taxi is something that is designated usually by a big company or a big, a big city like the New York taxis. But a ride share or an Uber is basically where a normal person signs up to drive their normal car for Uber, the company. 
Now, in the U.S., it's becoming so much more common that even if you use a different company like Lyft, uh, there's so many different companies that are ride share apps, but we've been using the word Uber. So Uber usually just replaces any ride share, even any different platform. So it's one of those words that's kind of taking over other companies. It's taking over. Even if you get a different company, we still call it getting an Uber. So any time of day means early in the morning, late at night. It's really easy to get an Uber or get a ride pretty much any time of day in almost any big U.S. cities. So what about you, Mark? Is Uber available where you live in the U.K.? Yes, the taxi apps here are actually really solid and you can basically grab one virtually anywhere, anytime. So what Kat said about Uber is also true in the UK. If you take a taxi or a rideshare with an app, you took an Uber. Like, how did you get here? Oh, I took an Uber. Maybe you used a different app, but you took an Uber. Uh, Uber is like the Google. If you search for something online, I Google it or I Googled it. I Ubered here is the same thing. It's even become its own verb. But uh, in the UK, the taxi apps here are actually really solid. Solid here means reliable. Uh, you will get what you want. You will get where you need to go. The taxis are solid. They come on time. There are no scams. They are reliable. The taxis are solid. The Ubers are solid. You could even say this about a restaurant. Uh, what's the food like? Oh, yeah, the food is solid. Like it's reliable. It's always the same. You'll get what you want. We, you can use the phrase take a taxi. But I think Kat's already mentioned it. Grab. Did you mention that one already? No. Okay. No, but we use this a lot in the States as well. <laughs> right. So to take a taxi, to take an Uber, grab an Uber, grab a taxi. Uh, it's a more casual way of saying take it. So when you get in the Uber and get to your destination, you grabbed an Uber. And they're available virtually anywhere, anytime. That's a popular couple of words that often come together. Get there anywhere, anytime. So do you always use Uber or do you sometimes use other companies? Yeah, for sure. Even though I call it getting an Uber or taking an Uber, grabbing an Uber, I usually switch between two or three different services. I open up each app, I type in the address, and I see which one is the cheapest. Now, that's pretty common. Uh, here where I live, we've got Uber, Lyft, and I think Didi is also becoming more popular. I think that's a Chinese one, and that's becoming more popular as well. So there's lots of different ones, and sometimes they offer a discount. Sometimes if you ride, you get $5 for free, something like that. So I usually switch between two or three different services. When I say service, I mean a company, because this is a service. We are getting a ride from someone. Someone is driving us. That's a service. So we could say two or three different companies two or three different apps, two or three different services. So I open up each app, APP. I know some of my Chinese students say APP, but we actually say app, short for application. I open up each app, type in the address. So tap, 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 type, 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 type in the address. So maybe home or the office or a restaurant. And I see which one is the cheapest. Sometimes they have uh, what Uber calls surge pricing. So all of a sudden, a $20 taxi ride is now $40, $50. So I'll open up another app just to see if it's cheaper. And if they're about the same price, I don't really mind whoever can come faster. But sometimes the price difference is quite different. So I'll always go with the one that's cheapest. Now, what about you, Mark? Do you always use Uber or do you use other companies too? I usually flit between two or three big apps here. So flit to flit. Cat said switch or change. Flit is to change, change very casually, change very freely. 
I don't have a loyalty or a love for Uber. I take it because it's convenient and often it's the cheapest. But like Kat said, if another app is cheaper, I'll take that app. And if another app is cheaper than that, I'll take that one. Like I have no loyalty. I'm not a loyal customer. I flit between two or three big apps. Big apps are the big, biggest, most popular, most widespread apps with the most drivers. In London, uh, Uber is a big one. There's also one called Free Now, another one called Bolt. Those are quite new. So it's always changing. It's a very competitive uh, business. New apps appear that are cheaper and better and everybody rushes to them. So I flit between two or three big apps. If you're watching TV, you can also flit between TV channels to find something interesting. You might flit between coffee shops for something different or a different atmosphere. Yeah, I am a customer. I want the best price. So I will flit between two or three to get the best deal. Why is ride sharing so popular in England? Honestly, they are absolute lifesavers because the licensed taxis here are expensive. And there are also some horror stories of cab drivers ripping people off. But the drivers on the apps are much more reliable and trustworthy. So they are absolute lifesavers. I'm talking about the drivers on the Uber apps. They are lifesavers. If you are a life saver, you are someone very, very helpful and you help me when I really, really need it. Uh, maybe I lost my passport, but I had a photo of it on my phone. Whew, that's a lifesaver. Or maybe my wallet fell out of my pocket. I didn't notice, but someone tapped me on the shoulder and gave it to me. That person is a lifesaver. So for an Uber driver, maybe it's 3 a.m., I'm alone in a new place and there's no licensed taxis anywhere. I can just open my phone and try and find a ride. That makes them a lifesaver. They really helped me in that moment, especially in a brand new place where you don't know your way around. So the other side, the famous, one of the famous things in London is the black cab. Black cab is that stereotypical black taxi. You see them in movies and in TV shows. People wave their hand on the street and a black cab arrives. Black cab drivers know every road and every street of London by memory. They know it by heart. They take a test to do it and they become licensed taxis. They're a bit more expensive, but the idea is that uh, they know the best routes because they know the city because they pass the test. But there are some horror stories of cab drivers ripping people off. Horror stories, I'm not talking about movies or ghosts or zombies. Horror stories are bad stories. They're bad incidents. So maybe the taxi driver went the wrong way on purpose to charge you extra money. Or maybe the taxi driver was very rude or uh, disrespectful and didn't listen to you or kicked you out in the rain. If you hear a bad story about someone, or something, you hear a horror story. Uh, you might be walking past a restaurant and say, oh, I've heard some horror stories about that place. Maybe you heard that there was a rat in the kitchen or the food was terrible. So you hear some horror stories about licensed cabs. One of the main ones is ripping people off. That's charging them too much money. If a taxi driver rips you off, they overcharge you. Taxi drivers often rip tourists off, or you might say, he tried to rip me off, but I knew he was going the wrong way. I'm from the city. So unfortunately, there are those incidents. But if you take a ride sharing app, you know the driver, you can review the driver. And so there's a bit more responsibility, accountability. So people think that that's a bit safer. Oh, now if you have Uber just like we do, how do you normally use the app? The app is dead easy to use as well. You open up the app, tap in your address, and then it starts trying to connect you with someone. So the app is dead easy to use. Dead easy actually is very easy. I don't know if this is more of a British thing. Do people in America say dead easy? Dead simple? Kind of, but 
not not as often, I don't think. Right. Yeah. Uh, I could be talking about an app, a recipe. Oh, yeah. Making that dish is dead easy. It's very easy. You can also say dead simple. It's very simple. You open up the app, tap in your address with your finger, and the app connects you with a driver. So the app connects you with a driver. The app finds you a driver. You might be looking at your phone and say, ah, okay, it's connected me with someone. I've got two minutes. Bye-bye. So do you have to wait long to get a ride? As long as they don't cancel on me, I don't usually have to wait too long. Even at four in the morning, you can find somebody. Now, of course, in the United States, there are lots of people with cars. Okay, very car-centric in America. But sometimes we need to get a ride. Maybe we're drinking and we don't want to drive our car home. Maybe we're meeting some friends up and we don't want to drive all the way into the city. It, lots of people have cars, so there's always somebody around. As long as they don't cancel on me. So I was kind of looking this up because when we say cancel on someone, that means that it is my ride. They, the driver, canceled on me. That means they canceled my ride. Say, oh, I can't believe it. They canceled on me. So sometimes the driver can't drive you for some reason. The worst problem is when they've already spent five, 10 minutes looking for a driver, connected to a driver, and then 10 minutes later, the driver cancels on me. So as long as they don't cancel on me, I don't usually have to wait too long. Have to. Have to wait means need to wait. So I don't usually need to wait too long, even at four in the morning. Like, I'm a little surprised that even at four in the morning, at four in the morning, 4 a.m., you can find somebody. Actually, there's a lot of people where I'm from in Texas, they drive early in the morning because it's so hot during the day. So definitely easy to find someone even at four in the morning. All right, so what about you, Mark? Do you have to wait a long time to get a ride? I hardly ever wait more than five minutes. There's usually a driver just around the corner, usually dropping someone else off. So I hardly ever wait more than five minutes. So I rarely wait more than five minutes. I almost never wait more than five minutes. So I can find an Uber in five minutes or less. That's the benefit of being in a big city like London. There's usually a driver just around the corner. Just around the corner is not literally just around the corner. I mean just very close. Close to me, less than five minutes away from me by car. So that's a phrase that English speakers use. Oh, it's just around the corner. It could be two minutes walking, but it's very close. You can also use just around the corner with time. Uh, now it's April, so summer is just around the corner. That means it's very, very soon. So when your driver is coming and you've only got one minute on the app or two minutes, you say, oh, okay, he's just around the corner. I'm going to go. Uh, sometimes you find a driver, it connects you with one, and they are finishing another trip. The driver is dropping someone else off. Drop off is when they drive and they take their passenger to their destination. The passenger gets out, the driver stays in the car, so they drop off. We probably use this phrase a lot when we talked about kids uh, going to the, uh, doing the school run. Back in season one, you drop them off at school and you continue on to work. So the taxi drops you off at your destination, or maybe the taxi's dropping someone else off and then coming to you next. So the taxi is about to arrive. It's almost here. What happens next? So when my ride shows up, I always do a quick check of the license plate. They confirm my name, usually by saying, Cat? And I say, Yes. And then I get into the back seat and off we go. Now, I know in some cultures, it is common to get into the front seat 
It is not common in the U.S. to get in the front seat with your driver. You almost always get into the back seat. Now, of course, if you have three or four people, one person might ride up front, but I usually get into the back seat. So when my ride shows up, that means when they arrive, okay? When my ride shows up, when my Uber shows up. So we can use Uber for the car, the ride, or even the Uber driver. So when my Uber dr shows up, when my driver shows up, when my ride shows up, I always do a quick check of the license plate. The license plate is that metal ID, that metal piece on the front and the back of the car. So that's the ID of the car. So I check my phone and I just do a quick check. Okay, yes. Okay, good. So that is really my ride. Especially in a very popular restaurant area, you might have lots of Ubers showing up around the same time. You don't want to accidentally get in the wrong car. So quickly check the license plate. And they almost always confirm my name. They simply just say, Cat. And I say, Yes. That's it. If you don't want to talk to your Uber driver, that could be your only interaction. Now, I wouldn't say it's considered rude or impolite to not talk. Sometimes you just don't want to, and that's okay. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about this. Then I get into the back seat, and off we go. Off we go means we're, we're moving. We're moving along. We're driving. Let's go. Off we go. So what about you? What happens next when they pull up? When they pull up, I make sure to double check the number plate before I hop in the back seat. So you said, uh, show up. I said, pull up. And they have exactly the same meaning. So up, we're using this phrasal verb. Up means arrive. So the word up is keeping the meaning the same. Show up, pull up. They both mean arrive. You can pull up to work. You could pull up to a restaurant, show up to work, show up to a restaurant. So you see the taxi coming, uh, they pull up, and just like Kat, I make sure to double check the number plate. Mm. This is one difference between British and American English. In the UK, you have a number plate on the front of your car. I think the front one is white and the back one is yellow. Um, really? It's, it's the same thing. Yeah, uh, it's the same thing though. It's numbers that are the ID of the car. I like the way you describe that. That's exactly what it is. It's a car ID. And yeah, I'm making sure I'm getting in the right car, not a random car or the wrong Uber. The phrase I use to get in the car, I hop in the back seat. Hop is like a little jump, like a little rabbit or a frog. But we also use it when we get into a car, especially a car. I hop in the back seat. Like Kat said, again, you if you are the only passenger, you are expected to get into the back seat. You can take the back seat behind the driver or the one diagonal across from the driver. That's both okay. But yeah, you're not expected to get in the front next to them. So I hop in the back seat. So you are in your Uber. What do you do during the ride? So sometimes I get a chatty driver, so we chat a bit, a little small talk, but sometimes I don't feel like talking, so I just sit and look out the window or down at my phone. Now, like I was saying before, it's not considered rude if you don't want to talk, but it would be polite if your driver starts to talk to you that you talk back. Now, there are a couple of ways, especially with body language, uh, where you just don't want to talk anymore or you don't want to talk at all. So you can kind of look out the window or you can look down at your phone or, you know, you can kind of look busy on your phone. The driver will probably see you in the rear view mirror and they'll probably understand that you don't really want to chat. I would say most of the time um, my Uber drivers are really, really nice and they're sometimes quite chatty. Chatty is someone who wants to talk. Now, I actually really like taking Ubers in other cities because if I get a chatty Uber driver, they usually live there. So
So that's a nice time to talk about the city, talk about places to go, especially if they're picking me up from the airport. They might have some good recommendations. So I don't usually mind a chatty driver, but some days you just don't really want to talk. I don't feel like talking. So I just sit, look out the window, but usually I'm just looking down at my phone, reading some emails, checking in on some messages, looking on social media. What about you, Mark? What do you normally do during the ride? I track my journey on maps to make sure we're going the right way. More often than not, I just sit quietly and mess about on my phone until we arrive. So I track my journey on maps to make sure we're going the right way. So, of course, you hear horror stories about taxis, licensed ones and Ubers, potentially. So I want to make sure that I'm not getting ripped off. I want to make sure we are going the correct way or the fastest way to my destination. So I will track my journey. To track is to follow and the app will have a little image of your car and you will turn left and right as you go. So you can track your journey the same way you can track a package from Amazon or online, track a parcel. Where is it? You track your journey. Where are we? Are we going the right way? Is this the fastest way? So some people also send their ride to other people so they can track your car as well and make sure you're safely going the right way as quickly as you can. So I track my journey on the maps and kind of like Kat mentioned, in England, you're not expected to chat to the taxi driver. You don't have to chat if you don't want to. You can just look at your phone, you can stare out the window and you don't have to chat with them. Often the licensed taxis, the black cab drivers are famously chatty. They will always try and start a conversation, but if you're not interested, they won't keep pushing. It's also okay if you want to start the conversation, that's fine. If you want to talk, uh, you can ask the driver questions or you can talk about the weather or if you see something weird happening on the road, like roadworks or nearly an accident, you can mention that and that might start a conversation. So it's okay if you start the conversation and it's okay if you have no conversation either. There's no expectations about it. So I don't chat that much. I mess about on my phone, mess about, I waste time. I look at social media. I look at memes. I look at pictures. I just mess about. I don't do any work or send any emails. I don't do anything serious. I just mess about on my phone until we arrive. So now it's the end of the trip. You made it. Do you tip or review your Uber driver? Yes. So in the US, it's customary to tip your driver, just like we tip our servers in restaurants. Maybe a few dollars or 10%, depending on the ride. I usually just leave the tip and a review on the app with my credit card. It's all really convenient. Now, in the U.S., we're using cash less and less. I know over the years, especially after COVID, a lot of people are switching 100% to credit cards. Now, I think overall, if you are going to pay cash, your driver might not have much change anymore. It's just become so common to leave a tip and to pay with your credit card through the app. So when I say through the app, that means the transaction is going through the app. I have my credit card, the app charges me, and then the money goes through to the driver. So in the US, it is customary. Customary means that that's natural and normal in our culture. So it's customary to tip your driver. In some big cities, a dollar or two is perfectly fine. Or if it's a very short trip, you can just simply add 50 cents, 75 cents. But it's getting more uh, common just to do it through the app. So it's easy to add 10 percent. I think 20 percent is quite high for a driver. But you have to remember that they don't always get all of that money and they have a lot to pay, even if you've gotten a good deal that a lot of people still have insurance, they have gas to pay, they have everything that they need to pay. So I always like to give about 10%. So I usually just leave the tip 
and a review. I know it's important for most Uber drivers to keep their five-star review. So if I'm happy with the drive, the person was very nice. They drove where I wanted to go. They were chatty. We had a nice conversation. Easy drive. 10%, five-star review, no problem. Easy to leave through the app. So, Mark, what about you? Do you tip or review your driver? We don't tip, always, but I usually give the driver five stars unless they go completely the wrong way or drove like an absolute maniac. So, yes, uh, to talk about tipping quickly, tipping is not customary in the UK, as in you are not expected to tip uh, taxi drivers or at restaurants or in cafes, anywhere. Um, however, that said, sometimes I've taken a taxi and it was £19 and I only had a £20 note. I gave him the pound note and said, keep the change, especially if it's like two in the morning or 1am or something. That's fine. And some people do that. That is like a tip. But that's one of the few places that people do tip mm. in the UK. Uh, instead, because we're using an Uber app, I usually give the driver five stars. So not physically, I do it on the app. And the funny thing is, five stars is the best score you can give. But five stars is also kind of the standard. It's kind mm -hmm. of normal. Uh, if you have a driver and they have less than five stars, oh, you're like, oh, wow, what did he do? This guy must be a little bit crazy. Maybe he's a bad driver. Maybe he's rude. You can actually like reject that driver and try and find another one. So five is actually normal. If my drive was fine, we didn't crash, we didn't talk, five stars. Perfect. <laughs> if it's less than five, then I feel like something's really wrong or they got in an accident during a ride. So I give five just to maintain that five and keep their profile alive. Uh, the only reason I wouldn't give them five is if they go completely the wrong way, so the wrong direction, a longer route home. Maybe I think they're trying to rip me off or make my trip more expensive. Or they drove like an absolute maniac. Maniac is a dangerous driver. Uh, you will hear this word when people are angry behind the wheel. If they have some road rage and they're shouting at other cars, they say, you maniac, he drove like a maniac. And maybe if your Uber driver is a maniac, you're scared. Maybe you use that little handle on the side of the door and you're going left and right in the chair. Yeah, that's scary. And you don't want to be scared in your ride. Uh, you might feel sick in the back of the car. Uh, you might just be afraid. So if the Uber driver does something like that, maybe then I will give less than five. But I honestly can't think of a time where I gave less than five. Five is the minimum, the standard. Have you ever done it? Have you ever given less than five to somebody? I've never been in a bad situation or anything like that where I needed to give less than five. If someone is not very friendly or maybe they didn't turn the air conditioning on or something like that, I do feel a bit bad giving less than five unless there was a real reason. Because like you said, five star is not amazing. Wow. Perfect. It's just normal. It's just normal. It's just decent. You did the job. You did the job. And I mean, it's same. It's the same thing with Amazon reviews or, you know, reviewing someone online. If it's not perfect, then there's something very wrong with it. So it's it's a weird system. It is. I'm, I'm not sure how to fix this system in the future, but that's what it is. OK, so there you go, everybody. Lots and lots of great new vocabulary and expressions to help you talk about taking an Uber or your next ride or ride share. Like always, we love to hear your comments and stories about your daily life. So why not answer these questions down in the comments below and try to use some of the vocabulary that you've seen in this episode. Question number one, is Uber available where you live? Do you have Uber where you're from? Question number two, how do you use the app? How do you use the app? Is it really convenient or is it kind of difficult to find a, find a ride? Do you have to wait a while to get a ride? 
Does it take 10 minutes or does it take two minutes or does it take 30? Do you have to wait a while to get a ride? Yes, please let us know in the comments below. We do read and reply to every single one. So it's a great chance to practice with both of us. And again, if you want the PDF transcripts of this episode and all the other ones, we have a hundred videos now. Uh, you can become a high level listener member. The details of how to do that are in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again very soon. Bye, everybody. Bye bye.